So the Jaguar XJ8, let's just orientate ourselves where we are with this car in Jaguar's history. So this is the X308, so it's made from 1997 into 2003, exceeded by the X300. Now this car is equipped with the 4 litre naturally aspirated engine, there's also the XJR which a childhood friend's dad of mine had, um, which is supercharged, so a little bit more punch. But in terms of refinement, in terms of creamy smooth, um, the naturally aspirated lump is a really exciting option to go for in terms of refinement and performance kind of balancing each other and they seem fairly bulletproof overall now i don't want to get everything bogged down with the specs because there are countless youtube videos going over the history of these cars um, and uh, the sort of uh, wikipedia specs so i'll avoid that really i want to show you the car see what it's like inside does it live up to that pace grace and space mantra that jaguar sets itself so the actual block and a lot of the dna of this car does hark back to before Jaguar undercame Ford's ownership. So it is a thoroughbred Jaguar, but obviously with some of those maybe refinements and reliabilities that Ford hopefully brought to the car. Let's go for a drive and let's see what the car is all about. So jumping into the car, what you notice is, well, as you'd expect, it makes really nice progress down a road. Very refined, suspension seems set up brilliantly, and it's everything that you'd want from the X308. So this generation of Jag had Jaguar's J-Gate, so it's the gear selection lever that allows you to select park, reverse, neutral and drive. And then you can place the gear selector over into fourth. So now the gearbox can select up to fourth, so first, second, third or fourth, whichever it deems appropriate. So it's not just putting it into fourth, if you come into and slow down at traffic, the car will change down into first for you, but it can't select fifth. You can then put it down into third so it can select up to third and then if you deem it appropriate you can select down to second as well. If you are at an inappropriate speed the car won't let you put it into second. So in second now roll onto the throttle and then I manually select third it changes and then I manually select fourth and it changes. So why might you want to manually select those gears? Well, first of all, if traction is limited in um, snow and ice, so as a driver, you know the conditions better than the car does. So you can read those conditions and it might be appropriate to pull away at or stay in a certain gear. Also, it allows you to use your engine braking because if you're just in drive and you're going down a steep decline, you're not gonna get any of that engine braking like anyone with good road craft would use in a manual. The other one is like I've got in front of me now. The car doesn't know if you're coming up to a corner. So again, as you come off the gas onto a corner, it doesn't know what gear really you need to be in. So I'm going to manually select third, then second. Then when I come out the apex of this corner, acceleration because otherwise the car is going to be pulling out of that corner in fifth or fourth gear it will then change down with that kick down when it realizes you need more power but actually coming into the corner you can use the engine braking again with third or second gear and then as you come out the apex of that corner and you're ready to get on the gas you don't have to wait for those two maybe three gear changes as the car realizes you need the power so it's just for more spiritual driving when you know the road conditions and the road ahead of you better than the car can anticipate so this car specifically is sat at 120,000 miles um, no engine rebuild no gearbox rebuild and the car drives really nicely so don't be put off by higher mileage but give it a really good test drive that's not to insult your intelligence but some of these do clank and bump whether that is the engine whether that's the gearbox you should be able to select all five gears put it in reverse put it into park without any nasty knocks and bumps. So could the XJ8 work as a daily driver? Bottom line is, yeah, of course it could. In 
in my experience it's been reliable it's certainly very comfortable and it's good fun to make every day a little bit more exciting and prompts a lot of conversations from people in petrol stations and at work no one has a bad word to say about this car because it's got that style and refinement but no one really thinks that you're trying to make a statement because ultimately it is an older jack and there's two categories of car lovers there's those that love cars and there's those that love themselves and want to be seen in a certain car and i just think that this car communicates that you actually love the cars and the heritage of the brand the way it looks so everyone's always very positive everyone's always got a story about these oh my granddad used to have one of these or i saw this in that tv program used to love them in that whatever so everyone's very positive about these cars and uh, it does make for a really good daily driver now I'll try and pull over in a moment to give you a proper walk around the Jag but just a few points to note I think it's really cool that the front seats are fully electrically adjustable with the driver's seat being memory programmed so if there's a two or three of you that are regularly jumping out of the car you can program your seating position and then save it um, in one of three slots on the memory function the aircon still blows really cold, which I think is great. We've got a tape player in here. Never did I think I'd be going to Halfords to find a oh, lovely Lotus there. Um, never did I think I'd be taking a trip to Halfords to find a tape to aux converter. Um, I thought those days had long gone, but uh, no, that trip was made. And then it's got a CD interchanger, six, seven discs in the boot. Now, performance. I think you've got to treat this as a luxury car that has some really cool performance as a add-on rather than stepping into one of these as a performance car. So, the 4-litre lump is nice and torquey. Plenty of overtaking power in terms of just everyday driving scenarios. On ramps, I don't know if that's an American term, slip roads onto dual carriageways, getting up to 70 miles per hour, it just doesn't challenge the car at all. It's very happy and composed sat at 70 actually. The revs drop down nicely to about 2000 RPM. It sits at 2000 RPM on the motorway at 70 really nicely. Even with that back box that I talked about deleted, there's no real um, road noise, harshness and drone from the the, the exhaust so that's definitely a plus point for the Jaguar in terms of that refinement comfort and talking about it as a daily driver the kick down on this is really nice so as you probably know on automatics when you dip your foot onto the accelerator and you compress it um, deeper very quickly it will kick down likely two gears um, to give you some really nice overtaking power so it's not a slow car it's really good fun taking four mates to the pub you can actually surprise your passengers with the pull that this car has but I think you could become unstuck i.e. things go wrong if you forget the handling characteristics of the car it's an older chassis um, the obviously the suspension technology is not what we're used to driving modern cars and it is a big car so I don't want to make out that the turning radius is big but it isn't a overly nimble car and if you were to begin to push it on the uh, twists and bends like you would a smaller sportier car then that's where the sort of the oversteer um, and the problems surrounding handling could come in but you'd really have to push it it's still perfectly responsive nice progressive steering and um, but you've got to remember that it is a longer wheelbase car than most people are used to oh I know this car park Okay, let's park up here and have a walk around of the entire vehicle. As I remove the key from the ignition, the steering wheel goes forward and the memory seat goes all the way back to allow maximum space to get out of the vehicle. So let's just jump out and I think we'll come back to this lovely interior in just a moment. Chrome detailing, obviously that divides opinion, but I think it suits the car. On the lookbook, this vehicle is blue, but under this light, it looks more green and it actually merges into black. On the key, we've got headlight controls and obviously remote central locking. Now on the front, the chrome grille and the leaping Jaguar. It's actually a metal cable bolting that down to the car, so a would-be thief could not nick it. So, beginning to see the lovely sleek lines on this car, that bridges that gap between modern and classic performance so 
very long wheelbase and we can see the dual exit exhaust on the rear there and as we come around we can see the lovely 16 inch alloy wheels that came with the car for this generation and do check here for bubbling of the paint because that can be indicative on the rear wheel arches of rot and more invasive uh, rust. So we've got the XJ8 and the Jaguar badge on there. That number plate is the only one that's on any of the documents of the car. So it was, although personalised, it was the original number plate. Now, let's have a look in the boot. This is a proper Mafia body disposal boot. Loads of room for a family vacation spare wheel in there and the Jaguar multi inter disc CD player whatever that I said before hazard reflective triangle loads of room in there so absolutely brilliant for a family trip away and you can just see the appeal of the car and the lovely sleek lines. Let's just have a look at the lovely cream interior. So door sills, got the lovely Jaguar emblem badge, works really well. And you can see how well these seats have fared actually. They're still plush, they're still supportive, and they're fared pretty well. Not much use of those rear seats. Let's just head round to this side. You can see how nice condition the seats are in. Let's actually jump in. Now, you can see the genuine wood inserts. These are not hydrogen, they're not plastic. We've got controls for the air conditioning there and a cigarette lighter. The rear passengers have got have a cigarette lighter and their own ashtray look. So lovely genuine beech wood detailing and on this armrest for the upper trim levels, you would actually have um, phone and radio controls if you're being chauffeured about. The dash and the steering wheel look at that sort of darker uh, beige colour, which I think just works. It kind of offsets it and doesn't have everything cream and it won't be as reflected in the sun. So storage, pretty good. That's where my orcs to cassette is you can see the J gate with the sport button that just holds on to the gears for a bit longer you get more revs just got to cut to the outside of the vehicle to show you this this is a real anorak piece here <laughs> so original toolkit not all of the cars came with it I think it was an optional extra and you can see we've got bulbs and spanners spare fuses I actually have got in the top left there look the torque bit for the J gate if you need to unlock it and pliers etc so cool to have that if you are going to pick up one of these cars having spent a little bit of time in the XJ8 I really am taken aback by just how much car you get for your money especially considering how much these would be when they were first sat on that showroom floor years ago. Now you do take certain risks, so these are unrivaled in the price point for a second hand car. In terms of the tech, the driving experience, the class, the lines of the body, the interior, the comfort, but you run some risks. If there is total gearbox or engine failure, it's going to run into a cost higher than what you paid for the car second hand. Okay folks, so there we have it. Hopefully that was a little bit of an insight into the car for entertainment purposes, if not to inform a potential purpose. My personal opinion, pick up a good one and go for it. Thanks for everyone who subscribed despite me not being very active on here and I'll catch you in the next video.